Back by popular demand, it's Mama Gina. Hi, everybody. Mama Gina and I are going to be making some, uh, what are we calling them, Milanese? Yeah. <laughs> Mama Gina and I are going to be making some tofu milanese. We've tried making milanese before with seitan, but when it got cold, you started to taste the seitan flavor. And we're not big fans of that. No, we're not. <laughs> so we uh, experimented and tried it with tofu. And we really liked it. And so did Papa Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Came out really good. So if you haven't heard of milanese, you've probably heard of schnitzel, fried steak, or... Cotoleta? Cutlet. <laughs> Cutlets. <laughs> Today we're going to serve it with some tomato sauce made with hot banana peppers and a little bit of onion. One of my faves. So let's get started. Okay. So what have we got here? We have extra firm tofu, which we're going to strain and let press for about half an hour. So we want to take as much of the, the liquid out so that we can slice it very thinly and it will maintain its texture and structure. So when you do go to fry it, it won't fall apart on you. And the extra firm tofu has a really meaty texture, especially after it's been pressed. It just makes it really, what's the word? Rub, not rubbery. Not rubbery. <laughs> That's Satan. No, it, may, it, it maintains, it holds together well and retains its texture. So it's got a nice bite to it when you go to bite into it. We're gonna be preparing our marinade. Do you so, have to marinate this? It does give the tofu more flavor. In a shallow casserole dish, I'm gonna put the marinade ingredients in here. So then when we put the tofu, it'll kind of lie flat and all the tofu would absorb as much as the ingredients. Okay, so to this, I'm gonna use some soy sauce. Quite a bit of soy sauce because I want to make sure all of the tofu gets coated. And you can use liquid aminos or tamari instead, right? Yeah. Now, to bring out more of the chicken flavor, I'm going to use a little bit of non-chicken bouillon powder. But it's a chicken non-chicken bouillon powder. Chicken non-chicken bouillon powder. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to sprinkle that in. Maybe a couple of teaspoons or more. Okay. Let's see if it is. Contains soy. Um, I'm also going to add uh, some poultry seasoning. Now, poultry seasoning, it's just spices, so don't let the name fool you. Um, so I'm going to sprinkle that in. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of garlic powder. I'll just mix that all together. So let's get the tofu. So I'm going to remove my hamburger press, which I don't use it for pressing hamburgers anymore, <laughs> and my frying pan. Okay, so let's remove the tofu from the tea towel. So last time you cut this in squares, but we are doing something different this time, right? Today we're going to cut it in triangles because um, I find I could slice them thinner that way. I'm going to use my knife. Okay, so to cut this, I'm just going to cut it on the diagonal. And now I can stand them up and slice them nicely. What kind of knife is this? Um, you know what? The funny thing is I bought a knife set and I saw this knife and I'm over there. Well, I'm never going to use this knife ever. But it's come in very handy because it is such a, a, a flat blade. I can go very evenly without having the roundness of, of a regular knife. Yeah, it seems perfect for this. I, I use it to slice cakes. It just works extremely well. Okay, so I'm just going to slice this all the way down. And I like doing it on the, dia on the diagonal here because I've got a sturdy base. Okay, so we can put that in to the marinade. You want to just turn it over one more time. Okay, so that it coats all the sides. Ooh. 
We've been using tofu so much since going vegan. It's such a versatile ingredient. Like we've used it for ricotta, we've we used use it for um, meat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's set this aside and let it marinate. Okay, so while the tofu is marinating, we're gonna be making some sauce. We're gonna make a sauce. I've grabbed a, a pan and we'll just turn on the heat. To the pan, I'm gonna add some olive oil, some onions. So I've quartered banana peppers and I de-seeded uh, a couple of, of the banana peppers, but I kept some seeds in so that it will maintain the spiciness that we're looking for. We're gonna throw that into the pan as well and we want this all to saute together. I'm gonna add some salt now. So I'm just gonna put the lid on it and let that cook. So what I like to do here is add uh, the black pepper now. and oregano. Now, we don't want the peppers to be too soft because when you add the sauce and it cooks in the sauce, it'll start to soften. But we, we want to have a little bit of a bite to the peppers. We want to maintain that. We don't want it to dissolve in the sauce. So right now, we'll add the, the sauce, the passata. Now, what I always do is put some water in the actual jar and shake it up. I did that too. <laughs> this way, all the good stuff is still stuck in the jar. Yeah. <laughs> because it takes a long time to cook, you want it to be a little bit watery at this point, and then it will cook down and thicken up. This way, your sauce won't burn either. Now, I'm gonna let this continue to cook. I can see it's starting to boil. We don't want it to, to be an aggressive boil. So we're going to lower the heat to about medium, come back and check it in about 10 minutes, and then maybe lower it some more and let it continue to cook. Okay, Rock, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our dredging station. So you're going to need three containers. So what I like to use for the egg replacement, we're just going to bind the um, breadcrumbs to the tofu, is aquafaba. So aquafaba is made from, uh, it is the liquid that the chickpeas are preserved in, in a can. Rocco, if you would like to open the can for me, pour the aquafaba in here, and then we're going to set the chickpeas aside and we'll make hummus later. So aquafaba can be used for a lot of things. You can actually use it to make meringue. Yeah. One day, we've got to try it. Well, you just whip it up and it gets really fluffy. Mm -hmm. Add some sugar, vanilla, it's really good for that. Now for the one tofu, you probably, half a can is probably good. Okay. You probably don't need the whole can, but that's fine. Okay, in this dish, I'm gonna put in some cornstarch. And this is where we're going to put the tofu. Oh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want me to put some breadcrumbs in here? Yes, please. To the breadcrumbs, we'll put in some oregano. Oh, the other thing I like to do is uh, Put some parsley in the breadcrumb. So Rocco, can you please chop some parsley for me? Yes, I can. I'm also gonna add uh, some salt to the breadcrumbs. And a little bit of salt in the corn starch. We'll add some black pepper. A, a little finer. This way you're not biting into a big chunk of parsley. Uh, some garlic powder and a little bit of nutritional yeast. I don't like using a lot of nutritional yeast, but just want to give it a tad bit of, of flavor. Okay, okay. So you can put the parsley into the breadcrumbs. 
and just stir that in. So we're ready to um, coat the tofu. We're also gonna grab another plate. So after we've coat them, we'll just put them in the plate and then take it to the fry. So we'll take the first piece of tofu and just dip it into the cornstarch. Dust it off. We'll put it into the aquafaba. Is your other hand? Oh, yeah, I could. <laughs> <laughs> put it okay. in there and I'll, I'll put it in there. Yeah. So, so something else you need to do. Let me show you how to do this. Just take the breadcrumbs, dust it on top, and press it in. When you press it in, it presses on both sides. And we can just put that into the pan. Okay, so. She always takes over. <laughs> now we can start our assembly line now that I showed you how to do that. So we're ready to start frying? Yes, we are. Let's just throw a little crumb from our, so that's ready. So let's take a piece of the tofu. So I just put enough in to fit in the pan. I'm going to fry one side for about two minutes and then flip them over and fry the other side for another couple of minutes. I've also set up a tray with a uh, paper towel. So when I do take them out of the oil, I'm going to drain them on the paper towel. Okay, this batch looks like it's ready to come out. See the golden brown? Take, take a couple of pieces here. One for me, one for you. Yeah. <laughs> so our sauce is ready. We'll put our, a little bit of sauce on top. Now this is also great to serve with like a mushroom lemon sauce. Are you ready to try it? Sure am. You go first. How is it? It's even better than the last time you made it. I'm gonna try with a little bit of pepper. I find that all the time I cook with you, things get better. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crispy. Mm. I can't believe the texture. This is only our second time trying this, but it looks exactly like me. Your dad will love it. <laughs> He'll love it. It's been really fun cooking with you today, Mom. Please bring me back. <laughs> I, love, I love cooking with you. And like I said, all the time I try something new and I do it with you, it seems to be better each time. Mama Gina, do you want to take us home? Well, everybody, if you really like this recipe, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button at earththorocco.com. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> You're getting better though. <laughs> don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And check out EarthToRocco.com. Yes. <laughs> bon appetito. Bon appetito. It's got the tenderness, it's got the chewiness, it's got the crispiness, and the sauce has got a zing to it. Delicious. <laughs>